So we are looking at a sample of the photograph poem, and this particular sample is one that I wrote for a class that I took in college many, many years ago, um, but it's a, a poem that I was particularly proud of. Now, a couple of things that I want to point out to you first is the names on this poem have been changed due to privacy issues, and the photo that I got the inspiration to write this poem from is not what's posted here in your sample. The photo that I have posted here is something similar that I found on the internet to my original photo, but again, due to privacy issues, um, I did not feel that it would be appropriate to post the original photograph. So that being said, if you have a photograph that has your friends or your family's faces on it, you may want to make sure that they're okay with you posting that picture online. It's only going to me so um, it's not something that'll be published necessarily worldwide. But again, some people are uncomfortable with that. So just make sure that you're getting permission from anybody really whose face is showing up in a photograph that you may be using for inspiration. If you cannot get their permission, you must select a different photograph. If you can't get anybody that's comfortable with using their photo, then you can always select a photograph maybe that does not contain faces, something of nature or a pet or an object that you're particularly fond of. So here's the poem that I wrote titled The Photograph, based off of the photograph from my past. I do encourage you to use um, a more creative title, maybe something that's based off of an element of the actual photograph. Mine wasn't super creative, um, so consider that when moving forward. Okay. Snow falls, delicately outside, blanketing the lawn with heaven's diamonds. A flash of bright light captures happy smiles of ten friends on a dark strip of film. There was Nick in hunter green and purple, though he's old now, forever frozen on glossy paper. Down the line, Joe and Jacob, brothers. I used to think they looked like twins. Now I see Jacob's defined jawline, giving him the seniority of the two. Julie and Vicky squeeze in the middle. All night they complained about the cold. Later, Nick stares in the distance. I wonder if he is watching the snow icing the trees as I am. His mysterious eyes will never tell me the truth. The narrow piece of ribbon developed into a sea of colors. I wish I could go back there. All right, so there's a number of things additionally that I want to point out to you about the structure of this poem. The first thing that I want you to look at is this sentence here. Um, and actually the sentence in front of it, it's, it reads, snow falls delicately outside blanketing the lawn with heaven's diamonds. This is a very figurative way of basically just saying a lot of snow fell outside and created kind of what looked like a blanket of snow. I chose Heaven's Diamonds because of the way that the light glistened on the snow kind of gave it a diamond-like quality. So as you're drafting your poem, your first draft at least, please go ahead and just write the memories down as, as they come into your head. You don't need to worry about figurative language. But when you do get to the final product, you will want to spend some time revising some of the sentences and inserting more instances of figurative language. The next thing that I want to point out to you is the use of film terminology. I'm going to highlight this here and again down over here. Dark strip of film, narrow piece of ribbon, because this is inspired from a film, we want to use some of that terminology in your actual poem. So a phrase here or there would be fine. I would like for you to insert at least two. Um, again, just to give that figurative quality to your writing. The next thing, and this is all in your instructions as well, that I'm going to highlight here is this sentence here for now, uh, there was Nick and Hunter green and purple. Okay, these are details that I'm getting directly from the photograph. But when I scroll down further, I get additional information. He's old now. So this tells the reader that this photograph is old. We don't know how old, and that doesn't necessarily ma matter, but what matters is um, the time and now. I scroll down further and I see additional details that are not necessarily um, viewable in the actual photograph. Later, Nick stares in the distance. I wonder if he is watching the snow icing the trees as I am. His mysterious eyes will never tell me the truth. These are details about this particular person's personality that you cannot get just by looking at a photograph, but that are relevant details to the memory of that person. 
The same thing here when we look at Julie and Vicky squeeze into the middle. That's directly viewable in the photograph, but when we look at the next line, all night they complained about the cold, those are details from the memory, not necessarily what is um, present in the photograph. The last piece of advice that I would give you is have a really strong clincher, or a really strong ending sentence. We don't want necessarily the reader to feel left like they're hanging. Um, so if you need to send me a couple of different sentence options, please feel free to email me or submit these through Schoology and I'd be more than happy to help you develop these.